<laughs> Here we go. You guys, I'm getting back on track with doing our Thursday live videos. So as you hop on, tell me where you're tuning in from because I, I love to see where everybody's at. Sometimes we get some out of the country people, but um, yeah, today we're gonna do a little bit more chat about brows because I know that a few of you have talked about that Sometimes it's kind of hard for me to talk to you about mapping, especially, yay, Holland, look at that, Maryland, Texas, Italy, England. I wish you guys could get the makeup. That's the problem. Netherlands, see how many people we have out of the country? Germany, oh my gosh, I love it. Fingers crossed that Saint decides to open up to where you live so that you can get the makeup as well. You guys are so sweet. Um, but I'm gonna talk about brows and then my under eyes. Um, and I have a few distractions, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about Demi. But let me know below if there's like a certain eyeshadow um, color you want me to use, or yay, Nancy, good job. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love the makeup. And fingers crossed the Demi edits come back like next week. So um, you guys are awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you for like being here. And um, if you could like share with your friends um, that, you like to follow me and that hopefully I'm giving you really good tips, especially if you have aging skin, sagging skin, a nose that's growing, all the things. But um, I'm drinking my like little energy hit before we get going. And um, you guys, you guys are awesome. Okay, so let's talk about brows first, should we? I should have gotten my brow brush out. Let's find a brow brush. Okay. This is going to be, um, ooh, you are so smart. Find somebody in the US or Canada, have the order shipped to them, and then they can ship it to you. Um, IPL, so I've had lasers done on my skin. It has made a huge difference, especially up here. I used to have like a lot of age like spots and even if I zoom in okay here we go again you can still see that I definitely have some this is like this weird thing that always happens but um these used to be really really dark and some of these I'm ready for another hit with the laser but um you guys if you haven't like invested in your skin a little bit you hear me talk a lot about um good skincare products and such, but you should be going and seeing an esthetician and having them, it's like a reset for your skin. And especially if you're struggling with like um, age spots that are really big or dark, many times on the cheeks, um, you like should be seeing one. They can help you with lasers and things like that to help get rid of some of that pigmentation. But also, um, especially if you're like super like sensitive, it will really help your skin to be kind of calm down, not produce too much oil, not get too dry, all the things. So um, let's get going on brows. I get so distracted when I see all you guys jumping on. It makes me so happy. Okay, so let's talk about a few different brow products. Products that... I really like that I don't always use and many times it's because I'm lazy okay sometimes I can be really lazy with my brows and um, I end up just using what's in my compact right here which is this shade right here but I do love using like this is from benefit I've had it forever 
all of the stuff is rubbed off. <laughs> that tells you how long I use stuff. I, I just don't use a lot of product. I'm not a believer in just like using a ton of product. I'm all about like keeping things nice and simple. And especially as I've aged, I feel like it's even more important that we just kind of simplify things and make things look as natural as possible. Um, I have been using a couple of new brow products that I'm loving, but pretty much you'll see me just use like a brush. There are some pencils like this one from Charlotte Tilbury that I'll sometimes use. Um, but overall, because I'm just like simple, I just use what's in my compact. It's easier. I don't like to have to rummage through a bunch of crap to find anything like I was just doing. I just want to open my compact and put my makeup on. So um, I'm just going to be using this here. Now, I love using a cream. One, because it's super forgiving and um, it, I can, if I mess it up, I can totally fix it. Um, another thing that you can do is use like an eyeshadow to fill in your brows. The reason that I like cream, one, because it's easy, two, it's just right there on the top of my compact, and three, I feel like it lasts for me. So I have had my brows microbladed, so that really helps me in knowing where I need to fill things in. If you haven't had your brows microbladed or professionally shaped or whatever, it's going to be important that you do that. I remember the first time that I started thinking a little bit more about my brows because um, my space between here and here was just getting smaller. Um, I was kind of struggling with like the hooded eye look. My brows were shrinking down a little bit. And it's amazing what happens when you have somebody come in and shape the bottom here, clean up all of the extra hair here, and then when you fill it in, your eye appears so much more lifted. So it's really important as you age that you take that in, into consideration. Don't be afraid that if you take off some of this hair down here, because maybe you were like a crazy over plucker when thin brows were in, that you can't kind of move your brow up a little bit. If you do that, move it up, it's going to make everything else look lifted. And that's what we want when we get a little bit older, right? So there's there's a good way to map and know where I'm going to put a bunch on my brush. This is not normally what I normally do, but I want to show you guys how easy this is. You take your brush and you put it next to the, your nose. And then you go through the corner of your eye, okay? And this is where your brow is going to start. So next to your nose, through the corner of your eye, start your brow right there. Don't be surprised if you do that and your hair starts clear back here. If you don't fill that in, it's just going to make your eyes appear more wide set and you're missing out on the opportunity to really frame that eye really, really pretty. Okay. The next thing is you want to know where your brow is supposed to end. Okay. So again, you take your straight brush next to your nose, through the corner, there's the corner of your, of your eye, take it up and make a mark. That's where my brow is supposed to end, okay? So now I have a starting point and an ending point. This is gonna be really helpful if you don't have a lot of brow hair left, okay? So start and end. Now, how do you know where to put the highest part of your brow. This is like, again, use your straight brush, go next to your nose, through the center of your eye, okay? Take it up. That is where the top of your brow should be. So then from here, it's all about just filling things in, okay? So you can see I've kind of made big marks not to worry it's cream so easy to fix so what I'm going to do is now I'm just going to kind of start to fill this brow in the easiest way to do this I'm going to zoom in sorry this is like up close 
but I really want you guys to be able to see. Oh, let me bend down a little bit. Is that better? So you can kind of see. Is if you look from here to here and here, it's like a little triangle. So my friend Chelsea taught me this. She's like, it's easier to start here and create the triangle, okay? So what I like to do is I'm just gonna take that at the top and I'm gonna draw down to that end point, okay? And then I'm going to come where, and you can take your line and mark it all the way. So don't be afraid to like really mark this up and then take it and fill it in. Now, you can see I've kind of made a mess and she's taken my brow down a little bit lower. It just goes to show you, you can totally just like, just go with it, try it. If, if you feel like this is brought down too low this way, it's gonna kind of droop your eye down, okay? So always try and keep this up higher but then just kind of take what's left on your brush and fill that in. I have to look up over here above my phone so I can actually see. And this one's hard because it's got all of this like weird skin stuff, which it's what happens, right? Now, from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of fill this in. Now, when you're doing your brows, I want you to remember you're supposed to have parallel lines, okay? Meaning this line up here is supposed to look the same as this line down here. If you take this one and go up kind of in a round and then you make this one straight, it's going to kind of mess with your eyes a little bit and with people who are looking at you. They won't necessarily be able to understand what's happening but trust me when you get these lines parallel and I just like to take and make small little strokes okay and I'm just going to kind of fill it in I'm going to take some of this cream we're just going to kind of wipe that off because we know where my brow is supposed to start and then we're going to kind of make like little hair strokes And I'm especially kind of bald right through here. And that's pretty common. You want your strongest line to be down here at the bottom, okay? Your strongest line to be right here. And then everything above it should be softer, especially as we get a little bit older. So let's take this part off there. And I'm gonna show you on the other side as well, okay? Then you can actually kind of just brush through. This is where a product like this comes in handy. This is kind of like a setting, like it gets, sets your brow hairs. So if you have like a few crazy brow hairs that are like going in directions that they shouldn't go, try using something like this or even like a setting spray, put on the end of your brush like this and brush it in, okay? Okay, I'm gonna show you this side and we're gonna do this quick. Okay, next to my nose, through the corner of my eye, up. Now let's say your hair starts clear over here and you're like, that's too big of a jump for me, then put it maybe halfway, okay? This is all about like what you like next to my nose, through the outside corner, bring it up, that's where my brow's supposed to end, okay? Next to my nose, through the center of my eye, that's the top of my brow, okay? Now let's fill it in. Let's fill in the outer triangle first, See how much easier this one is to see. And then I like to flip my brush upside down and go like this, just cause I like it to be soft, but don't be afraid to just like draw it on, okay? Because 
we can soften it with this. See that? See how those hairs? What question do you guys have about brows? The most, I remember before I had my brows like done, I was spending 80% of my time working on my brows. And it was really frustrating to me because I was like, I've got my foundation down to like three minutes and I have to spend 10 minutes on my brows. <laughs> So that's why I went and had that done. So, and you can see I kind of have a bald spot right there. So let's just kind of take a little bit more. Just kind of fill that in a little bit, okay? Now, if you, if you have some brow hairs and you want to make them look thicker, this stuff right here, um, it's called, it's Babe Original. Let me wipe some off so you guys can see it. And it's like a mascara for your brows. And you're gonna see, hopefully, hang on, let me zoom in. You're gonna see if it'll like, see how it's like making my hair look bushier, which the Brooke Shields brow is kind of back. Give me a heart if you know, you know. Okay, so you can use a product like that. But overall, I really wanted to go over like brow mapping with you because I feel like in those quick videos that I do, you just, you sometimes don't understand, okay? And don't be afraid to use, like if you like a pencil on your brows. Oh, hang on, I did that wrong. If you like to use some type of a pencil, you can do the same thing, okay? Just go up and mark, okay? That is gonna be really helpful when you're learning how to build a brow. Okay, you guys, do you want me to talk about Demi? Give me some hearts if you want me to talk about this Demi, these Demi color correctors that look like this, that you guys, I've been using these here for like, two and a half years and I'm barely hitting the bottom of the pan. So even though like a little set like this is like a hundred dollars, I promise you it's going to last you for years. And sometimes people are like, can't I just get one color? Mm, no, because if you, and we're going to get up close and personal with my under eyes. If you look at my under eyes, I have so many different shades. I have little brown spots, okay? See all these little freckly things? I have redness, I have purpley veins, all these things, and look at this right here, it's super red from my lash serum. If I was to take one color of this, it isn't going to do what I wanted to do because what you're seeing this color is brown and this color is purple, okay? So that's why you have to have a few different shades. That's why these little edits that come with multiple shades are so good. Now let me explain to you if, um, if I ordered or if I suggested a certain edit over another, okay, see these are my top two. There's one that's actually really good for like somebody that has like acne. Um, so if you have like a teenager or a granddaughter or somebody that struggles with a lot of acne, but maybe they're like 14 and they don't like to wear makeup, but they have acne and it's embarrassing to them. An edit like this would be amazing for them. And you would be surprised how much easier it is for teenagers to pick up on this, especially because they're probably right out of their art class. <laughs> so um, this one here is called the Rewind Edit. I likely recommended this one for you because I see a lot of really dark, dark stuff. So um, some of you, um, depending on your heritage or whatever, will have a darker under eye. 
than others and some of you may have more age spots and so you'll want a few more pinks. So that's kind of the difference between the two. So that's kind of how I based it off of, all right? And if you have a question about which edit you're gonna want um, when it comes back in stock, hopefully next week, uh, let me know your, you can always send me a picture and I will recommend which one I think is going to be best for you. But I promise you, I love using my demis. I just took one out and put it in the other one with my 3D foundation, okay? I love using them hand in hand. Um, I've never found anything better for my under eye than demi color. That, with that being said, it does take practice. It isn't something that you're just going to put like, on your finger and tap on and have all of your under eye issues go away it's just it's not like that you really want to that's why I zoom in for this one you really want to get in and like just spot treat because when you and you're thinking well I have so much under my eye my whole under eye is dark you're going to be shocked at what happens when you start to take away the darkest points of your eye and what happens with everything else kind of lightens itself up, okay? So, um, but this takes practice and it's going to, I wish I had a color wheel. Hold on, hold on. When you order, you're going, when you order a Demi kit, you're going to get a little like, what do you call that? A color wheel. I need to drink. Hang on, I need to drink more of that for my brain. Um, you're going to get a color wheel. And what this is going to help you with is when you see something like green, like an age spot that's like really green. You can see like I have age spots right here under my eyes. Then I know I'm going to need to come across here and find something that's pink to correct that. If I have something that's like purple, like this, I know across the color wheel I'm going to need something that is yellow orange, okay? So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. And I'm gonna zoom in and we're gonna start to talk about how I undertake my under eye. You are going to want a couple of brushes and it these do not have to be um, just saint brushes. What did I do with that brush? Guys, I have too many brushes down here. Oh, right here. So I have two brushes that I love for Demi, okay? Hang on, are these the same brush? Yes. Here. Let's get rid of the black one. <laughs> Let's use this one, okay? These are two Demi brushes. They have a small tip and a tip that's a little bit bigger. This is called the spot brush. This is called the bright brush, okay? I love them both and I feel like you are going to want some type of teeny brush like this. You could get out like your art brush, okay? Get out your art brushes like this. And just pull one out of a little kit that you got when you were into painting, okay? And you can totally use something like that. You just want something small enough, especially if you're trying to target age spots or spots like this. You're going to want something small enough because if you take a bigger brush, let's just show you this. If you were to take a brush like this and you're going in and trying to put something on just the little part, you're going to overshoot it. As soon as you put the color that's supposed to correct everywhere around that spot, it's going to make the spot look worse, okay? So if you've tried Demi and this has happened to you, it's likely because you take the color outside of the area. Now there are small, they're like fluffy brushes on this side and this side. I actually love this brush if you have really small eyes for eyeshadow. So that's the bright brush, and these are on sale, just so you guys know. I don't know if they're gonna be making new Demi brushes or, or what, but 
I can't imagine that I would like anything more than I like those two brushes. So if you got this kit, okay, this is the rewind edit. And you're like, what am I supposed to do with that orange? <laughs> like, there's nothing blue enough on my face for that orange. And that is true because I have a lighter skin tone. If you have a darker skin tone, you will likely need that orange. So we're talking about different depths of color, okay? So if you've got, you know, a deeper dark under eye, you're going to need a deeper color. That's why you'll see how we'll have like 03 and 01. You may need 03. I like 03 when I'm working some of these spots out here and I like 01 closer to my under eye. I feel like it just brightens my under eye. But this orange is so good. Hold on, let me grab a brush. For me, I like to, it's called 05. I like to take it and put it where I kind of look a little blue, kind of a little gray, a little blue when I don't have a tan. And so I feel like this is like such a great bronzer. And everything with Demi is super light. And it's not something that you're going to see one swipe of it and everything is going to change, okay? It's not like that. This is like about balancing the skin, balancing the darkness, the lightness, everything to make everything just look really pretty and natural, okay? So when you see some of these deeper colors, just know you can use them for other things, okay? I'm going to go back to this kit, which is the one I like to use, the Wide Awake Edit. And let's start working my under eye. Okay, hang on, I gotta lift this table up just a little bit because I'm gonna zoom in. Which eye should I start with? Hang on. Okay, I know this is kind of horrifying, but I don't know any better way to help, okay? So I've got all sorts of different colors here. The first thing that I like to do is I like to take like this color right here, this is 03 on the big end, because I know this is a lot of darkness and I'm just going to lightly diffuse that. Now, as you can see, it's not covering anything, okay? And this is called toning. So if you see other artists talk about toning, all this is is just kind of decreasing the depth, okay? So it looks like it probably didn't do anything, but you'll be surprised if you try this step versus not trying it, okay? So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my eye and I'm going to say, okay, where's the darkest thing that I don't like about my eye? What is it? Is it this color here, because it's so red? Is it this in here, because it's like deep shadowy purple? Is it this here or do you, does your eye pop out to this spot or this spot or around the nose? Because again, what we're trying to do is make this all blend in and look brighter, okay? So I'm actually gonna start to work this area right in here, okay? Now, when you look in these areas and it's hard because my light kind of does weird things when I'm like up close and personal, the best way to apply demi color is actually to sit in front of a natural light window, okay? But I can't necessarily zoom in and teach you guys that when, when I'm doing these videos. It's just kind of impossible. Let's just, I'm just gonna mess with that right there, okay? We're just gonna mess with that just so I can start to show you the magic of this. Let's take a little bit of this color right here, okay? This color right here, I like to call it creamsicle. It looks more yellow in the, in the camera, but it's actually kind of like a creamsicle orange. And I'm just putting a little bit and see how much product I got. I barely touched it and that is too much product. So I'm just gonna take this and just kind of softly diffuse that. 
Let's work just above it. And it's almost like just barely tapping. Yeah, let me know if you guys are seeing the magic. And if I cover something and you're like, wait a minute, back up, I didn't understand that. Let me know. That's why I'm doing these live videos because I want you to be able to see and see how that now didn't work with that same color. It's because that's a different color. So I'm actually going to go into this shade right here, which is 01, and I'm going to tap it right up here. See how much better that looks? See the difference? Look how the, my whole eye actually looks better. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a wild thing, okay? Now you're gonna wanna wipe your brush off in between these colors because um, they're so pigmented, you'll get frustrated. There's actually a little, um, where did I put that? Hang on. Like this little guy right here. And that is like, you can use a washcloth if you want, but this is just like really good to like, it's like a little spongy and it just wipes all of the pigment off of the brush. Let's just put it in there next to this. Okay, so let's go in and work this. Now, if you were to look at that color right there, what color do you think that is? Couple of hints. Anything that is dark will have some blue in it, okay? So that is definitely dark, so it has blue in it. Does it have kind of a purple hue to it? Can you see that? It's kind of purpley, right? But it's definitely dark. So if it's dark, I'm going to need an orange. I have orange here, here, and here, okay? This one here is good. That's the, this is the creamsicle one, is good for like purpley blue. These ones here and here, this is 01 and 03, are good for just anything dark. So let's take a little bit of the creamsicle one, barely any on my brush, and I'm going to go in and just touch on that area. And now, when you're watching this, you're likely thinking, um, this is gonna take forever. I have too many spots <laughs> on my face. And I promise you, <laughs> it goes a lot quicker once you get the hang of it, and I'm just trying to teach you. So I'm, I see that dark purpley shade down here. So I'm just kind of tracing that down a little bit. Just tapping, you guys. Very, very, very little product. This yellow color, this um, creamsicle color, if you have like broken capillaries, it's really good to just kind of tap on. Sometimes we get broken capillaries like down here. You can totally take care of them with that color, okay? So now you're like, that, that was okay. That was just like, yeah, you took care of the dark part. See the dark? See the difference? <laughs> kind of erased it, right? So now when you look next to it, there actually is like some almost brown spots in there. So it actually kind of has more of a muddy, shadowy look. So I'm actually gonna go in with just this color. This is 01, and I'm going to go in that, and I'm just going to touch on that area. And you can see I added a lot of product. So I tap it, and then I just barely, this isn't like blending it all over. Let's go down in that. Okay. I'm going to leave that alone for a minute because see that spot right there? I feel like that kind of just popped up. That's because it's probably just green. 
So I'm gonna work this area here. I'm gonna go with my slightly bigger brush, okay? This is the bright brush. And if you look at this shade right here, it just looks kind of dark. It might have a little bit of um, purple in it, but I'm just gonna go in with my 01. Barely any on the brush. Used way too much product. You can also take your finger and just kind of touch it because you don't want to take that color and swoop it all over. See what that's hap see what's happening. Okay. Now this right in here. See how it it almost looks like freckles. Sorry you guys, this is really up close. <laughs> um it almost looks like little individual freckles. Now, let's just talk about under eyes for a minute. Let's zoom out and give you a break for a minute and give my skin a break from where I'm messing with it. As we age, we lose the volume here. And if I've posted a picture before, but let me know if you want it, send me a message after. It shows how the separation of the bones, because our bones kind of shrink, and the cartilage kind of shrinks, will create a gap in here. As we get that gap, this starts to push back. When this pushes back, it's what causes, oopsie, there's stuff on that brush. It's, it causes your under eye to appear worse, okay? It, it makes you feel like it's your bag, this, that's getting bigger and bigger, but a lot of times, and it could be your bags could be bigger, and many times that's genetics, or for me, it's bad diet. If you see me with really puffy eyes, it's because I've eaten dairy or something. But um, if, you, if you're losing that volume in here, this is going to all of a sudden look bigger, okay? So what I did, I went in and had that the platelet-rich fibrin where they draw my blood and then they inject my platelets, my own fibrin that will actually create its own collagen and it has made a huge difference in here. Um, it's not filler. It's not like a quick thing. This is actually where it takes about four months for my own body to create that extra collagen to fill that gap up, that's what makes my under eyes look better. And it lasts like five years, okay? So it's taken me a couple, I've done it twice, but I've seen a huge improvement there and a huge improvement here, okay? So this is where like, don't be afraid to ask people like what they've done. Yes, it's expensive, but if you were to go in and have filler done every four to five months in those areas, or maybe you don't want to put filler in your face and that's completely fine, then um, this is a really great option. Filler costs like, I don't know, like, what is it, 500 a syringe? I, I don't do filler. I, I, I do a little bit in my lip right there. Um, the, but filler in that big of an area would probably be about six to seven hundred dollars every four months whereas when they go in and so that platelet rich fibrin is like if, if you've ever had knee pain have you ever heard of people having like um, knee pain and they go in and they get an injection in their knee it's like the same thing it's like the same idea so let me know if you want deets on that but let's get back to work <laughs> sorry I get off on a tangent but that's what these lives are for so I'm actually going to see that little spot right there let me know if I need to zoom in again I feel like see that right there and you're like oh that's getting really picky but we're talking about the overall under eye and whatever's dark is what we're trying to take care of. Because it's muddy and it's brown, that means it's green and needs something with pink in it, okay? 
So I have this one here that's just straight pink or straight red. This one here, which has a little bit of orange in it and a little bit of pink. I love this one around my under eye and I probably got way too much product. <laughs> and I'm just going to touch on that spot. can't see what I'm doing in my phone. There we go. See this right here? Looks the same color. So I'm just going to kind of work on that. See that start to lighten up? And have you ever been so frustrated with your, with your, um, with your under eyes because everything that you put on it creases with this makeup because most of your eye will not have any product on it, just in the few areas of darkness, then you don't have to worry about creasing. Okay, what did, there was a question. What do you do with coarse white hairs? Like in your brows, because I feel like I feel like brows are like such a problem when they're like great big white hairs, and sometimes, sometimes I'll get one in here, and I almost always just pluck it. <laughs> but pretty soon I won't have any hair left, so. Um, when you are filling in your brows, um, either the powder, if you use an eyeshadow, or um, the contour that I use will coat that white hair as well, okay? To see all that kind of disappear, okay? Now I'm going to show you this eye, this eye. See all this brown stuff right here? That's what we just got rid of over here. A blonde with light eyebrows, any suggestions? Yes, either oak eyeshadow, or you can use the shadow that I've used. It's a contour, um, but feel free to send me a picture and I can take a look at it and see which color I think you would like but I love oak on blondes. It's what my mom uses, um, and she's always been a blonde. She's got blue eyes. It's what my sister uses. It's like the perfect color for brows. Okay, so we've taken care of that. I've just got a little bit of excess makeup texture there. See this spot out here? Actually, it used to look like that, but because I've taken care of some of the other dark spots, now it's very minimal. So I'm just gonna go into a little bit of my O and way too much product. So you can see, you guys, you're hardly using any product, okay? Now let's go right there. This is just leftover from what's on my brush. See the difference? It's like, you know how you wanna put like a little bit of concealer on your under eye and, but when you put concealer on your under eye, all of a sudden you feel like you have to put makeup everywhere else. With this, you don't have to do that, okay? So when I look at my, when I pull them back and just kind of look at the overall, I'm probably going to come in and do a little bit more work on that. But in the meantime, this right here has become like, it just looks bad, right? It looks, as soon as I lighten this up, this is actually going to lighten this up. So when I look at this, I know this has brown in it. I know it's got like, it's like age spot. Um, it's definitely dark, 
So I'm actually gonna go in and do straight O3, just kind of tap, very, very little product on there. And I'm just gonna kind of start to work on this. See that already start to disappear? Did you guys see that? And when I'm using the orange, it's just gonna take care of the blue. Now you can actually see the brown start to peek through. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the red or pink. I'm just gonna kind of pick up the rest of that freckling. That's what it used to look like. That's what it looks like now. <laughs> While I've got pink on my brush, I'm gonna go in and just hit these little age spots that sit right on the outside of that crease, okay? Are you seeing the magic? Many of us will have a vein, okay? Whether we have veins up here on our forehead, like I have a vein right there, whether we have broken capillaries here, we'll have a vein. Now, veins are gonna be a few different colors. Many times, they're going to be what you consider purple. Many times, they're gonna be more blue. Sometimes, they're going to be a little green. The best way for me to help you is <clears throat> Just take one color, okay? So I'm gonna go in and let's take just an O, so just orange. If it's just dark, and I'm just barely touching, barely, you guys, on that vein, okay? The vein, where's the vein? I'm gonna go in, see the spot right here? And it is like kind of what you would consider red, but it's actually kind of purpley, okay? So I'm gonna go back into that creamsicle color and I'm going to touch on this. Way too much product. Gone wild. Let's do this one up here. See that? And we always get darkness here around our nose. I'm going to use my bigger brush. I'm going to go into my bright brush. I'm just going to go back into 03. And if when I put a small amount on, it doesn't take care of it, you know it's not quite the right color. So let's go in with the creamsicle. I hope this is helping you guys and not making you feel more worried about it. Right here on the nose, it's kind of green, so I'm gonna go in with some pink and just touch on that. See the nose? That's what it was. That's what it is. What do you think? What questions do you have? Are you overwhelmed? Are you thinking, I'm never going to be able to do this? <laughs> See this where I touched it in the middle? Let's take a little bit of better. Right in here, I'm going to take just some straight yellow and let's see what happens. Did you see that? Wild. 
Now, many times as we get older, this area right here looks a little dark. And so when you brighten that up, all of a sudden it's like, wow. So I'm actually gonna go in, sometimes I go in with this pink, sometimes I go in with this pink. I'm just on with the kind of the fluffy end, fluffing that up. This area right here, see how brown that looks? So I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the pink, orange, and just hit on the darkest spot. If it goes too gray, okay, that almost went too gray. Did you see it? It almost went like white. That means that it just likely needed orange. So anytime something goes shadowy, I want you to go warmer, okay? What do you think? You guys, I hope this was a helpful video. Don't be afraid to brighten this up, up here. See how as this recedes back, it makes this look darker. This is a good example of what happens with the under eye. As this recedes, we need to brighten just that up and it's going to make the rest of your eye look better. So I'm gonna go in with this shade right here, which is just orange. And I'm just gonna hit that darkest, darkest area. See the difference? See now all of a sudden you don't see that darkness. See that dark right there? It's kind of shadowy. Gonna go in with just a little bit of a one. Brighten that up. And then under my brow here, I'm gonna go in and take a little bit of this brighter pink. And just kind of brighten that under eye or that brow. wild right it's wild Demi is so fun and it's it truly is like the makeup that if you want the no makeup look so if I'm going to go out and run some errands and I have my really dark circles I'll come in and just do a quick little Demi on those like zits or whatever happen and then I'll come in and do my under eye and then I'm out the door and it's, it's really just looks like you just naturally look rested instead of tired. See how fun that is? You guys, if you have any questions about which Demi Edit you got, how to use it, please let me know. I can send you videos that I've done working on just certain areas. But like, look at my nose here. This area, gone. What do you think? Wild. It's so fun. Makeup should be fun. Don't let it stress you out. It's all a learning process. I actually, the best way to learn is to take, if you have like age spots on your hand and you have veins and stuff, right? So take your Demi and start like playing with just something on your hand because what happens is when you're trying to do your face, you're looking at everything, okay? And that can be overwhelming. Instead, go on your hand and start playing with just trying to get rid of an age spot, a vein, and then you can start to understand what Demi does and how little amount of product and brushes that you need. That's why they last forever, so. Hey, you guys, um, let me know. I've got a few other things I'm going to keep doing on Thursdays. I'll let you know um, either Thursday morning or Wednesday what time I'm going to do. And um, yeah, hopefully this has been helpful. Anything else you guys want to see? Just let me know. And we will like hurry.
hurry and show you, but look at my eye. Look at the difference. Wild. Wild. Okay, I think if, if you have messages for me and I didn't see them and I didn't answer them, be sure when I post this video that you go back and ask them again because my comments get deleted. Um, you guys, thank you for whoever bought a badge. Thank you, CS Wolf. Thank you. That was so nice. And, oh, Judy, Hootie Judy, you did too. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Um, as always, I'm here to help and uh, makeup's supposed to be fun. But as we age, sometimes we need to tweak things a little bit. And that's what I'm here for. So I hope you guys have a good night and ask all your questions when I post this video and I'll get back to every one of you. So have a good night.